Hi everyone. I think it's time that we have a talk about Calderona. Now obviously you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say the real word, not because it's forbidden or a sin, but because of Susan. So anyways, oh right, I'm home. Don't need this anymore. Oh, I went Michael Jackson on you. <laughs> okay, joking aside everyone, Let's get down to business here. This is a serious talk. First of all, I hope that all of you and your family and loved ones are okay through this whole thing. I know it's hard, but we're all going to get through this. It will happen. Um, somebody I've been watching on YouTube for many years, One Pug Life, who some of you do watch, used to say, when he was going to eat something, he used to say, if you ate today thank a farmer. Well, here's my message. If you live today, thank a nurse or a doctor. There's been a lot of people who have really kind of done the conspiracy theory on this whole Calderona thing, saying that it's all fake and the threat really isn't there and it's not really that big of a deal etc etc uh, I'm not going to entertain that because it's simply not true and I'm going to explain why later on in this video but I want to tell you about somebody very special to me who uh, is helping people through this whole crisis and that of course is the whiff now she's out working today hospitals don't close because she's a nurse and she has people to save. But before we get into that, I want to tell you a story about her that she told me mm, maybe about a year ago. Um, this was well before this whole pandemic that we have now. We decided one day to go out to lunch. So we went to a favorite spot that we have and we sat down, we ordered, and we're waiting for the food to come out. And we're talking, we had our soda or water, whatever it was, and we're drinking that, and we're just talking. And she says, oh, um, I don't think I told you. I said, what? She said, the other day I was going to an appointment I had, and as I was driving, I had noticed a car on the side of the road, and as I drove past, there was a guy slumped over the steering wheel. So pretty much what she told me was this. Immediately she pulled right over, slammed the car in park, you know, like the cops do. Don't worry about the car rocking like that or the transmission or anything. She ran over to the guy's car, and fortunately, thank goodness, his door was unlocked. She opened the door and got the guy out, and he wasn't breathing. She pulled him out of the car, put him on the ground and called 911 and started CPR immediately. So you do the chest compressions, you do the mouth to mouth. Fortunately, she had the phone on, on speaker and uh, got to talking to somebody right away and said, send the cops and paramedics out to this location. And the cops had showed up in like two minutes flat. So meanwhile, she's doing CPR. The cop shows up, sees what's going on. She says, I'm a registered nurse. He says, hang on. And he goes to his trunk and he had an AED, automatic defibrillator. And they hooked the pads up and shocked the guy. And he came back to life. That, I, I was in awe. The paramedics rolled up because they were rolled out at the same time and they took over and they took the guy to the hospital and whatever happened happened but it's very likely he lived if not for long at least for some uh, he may still be alive today I don't know anyway I said you when did this happen she says oh like three or four days ago I said, and you didn't tell me? What are you kidding? 
I said, I don't, I don't fucking believe this. I fix computers. You give me a computer, I can fix it. You fix people. I'm sorry about the cut in the video. Uh, the whiff actually just came home not long ago. She had a class today that she had to take, and there's an online portion that has to be completed uh, elsewhere, and she decided to just do it at home. So she came home, and she was doing everything fine, and for whatever reason, the internet went out, and I had to go reset the cable modem. Uh, it happened, so whatever. But look at that. I was called into action, I found out what the trouble was, and I fixed it right away. And it's back up and running. That's what she did. She saw this guy slumped over the steering wheel, and skidded to a halt, and jumped into action like that. And saved this guy's life. Um, I don't know about you, but that's a fucking miracle worker. I, I'm still in awe how she did that. Like I said, that was a year ago. So now we're in this whole Calderona pandemic. And she's in the ICU. You know what that is now? That's right, it's Calderona patients. Every single one of them has it. Okay, this is real. Now, she's told me stories about what's going on and how many patients and equipment status, and I'll get into all that. She's told me about all this. Um, quite honestly, I have no choice but to believe her. Not that she's going to lie to me, at least about that. <laughs> Not that she's going to lie to me, but uh, this is somebody on the inside. Okay, so all of you with your conspiracy theories, and this isn't a big deal, you're wrong. Okay, again, I'm not going to entertain your comments in the comment section. You're wrong because I have inside information. And I'm going to share that with you. Like I said, all of the patients there have tested positive. And she has to wear a gown and a face mask and a hair covering and uh, a, a N95 mask and the whole nine. In fact, here's a picture of her taken, oh, just a week ago or so. So every time she goes in the room, she has to be dressed up like that. And it takes some time to put all that stuff on. It's not like jump in, jump out. You know, it takes a minute or two to, to get all that on. <clears throat> then they doubled the amount of patients each nurse has to handle. So now she has double the amount of patients. Every unit in this hospital has become a Calderona unit. All of these patients are on ventilators. Uh, I'm talking uh, based strictly in New York, because that's where I am. Uh, and they've been saying on the news, and uh, the news is full of shit. So I will definitely give you that. The news is full of shit. They exaggerate everything, and all they give you is bad news, because good news doesn't sell. Okay? Uh, so take what you hear on the news with a grain of salt. There's some truth to it, but what they're telling you on TV is what they want you to hear. It's one-sided, it's skewed. And when it's presidential election time, if they're more partial to Democrats, they're going to side with the Democrats and give you a one-sided story. If they're Republican, they're going to side with them and do that. So what you hear on the news is skewed. There's no doubt about that at all. But here's an impartial a participant, not observer, but participant in this. And uh, it's, it's bad. Okay? It's really, really bad. Maybe not as far as what the news says, but it's fucking real. Okay? It is real. You conspirists may say that, yeah, there is stuff going on, but 
this and that, but this and that. I'm not going to hear the but this and that. It's real. You saw how she was dressed up. She didn't do that for fucking Halloween, people. Okay, this is the real deal. This is fucking wartime. This is wartime, is what this is. We're dealing with people with legs that got chopped off, or shot off, or a fucking cannon took them off, or something like that. This is serious. Okay? Every one of these people doesn't stand a very good chance of going home. So much so that in the hospital, they instituted a new policy or, or something. Uh, they have overhead speaker, PA system kind of thing uh, for when there's a problem on a particular unit and they need to run a code or, or something like that. So they page overhead. Well, they have a new thing they're doing now. When a patient recovers from Calderona and is going home, they ring a bell. Uh, she's hearing maybe one or two a day. The whole hospital is filled with these patients. Uh, she stands a great chance of getting this disease. And as a matter of fact, one of her coworkers came down with it. That she knows very well. That she works with somebody in her sa on her same floor, on her same unit, came down with it. Now, we don't know the logistics of where she got it and how. Was it dealing with patients directly? We don't know. It could have been on the outside. We don't know. But the fact of the matter is, she got it. She stands a very good chance of getting it because she's in direct contact with these people. Every day that she goes to work, I'm scared shit. The anxiety level is absolutely through the roof. Because if she stands a great chance of getting it, I stand a great chance of getting it. So far, we're fine. No symptoms, no problems, no worries about it. When she's off, everything's good. But the threat is absolutely real. Here's a bit of a more gruesome side to this. Uh, CPR, mouth to mouth, you can't do that now. Because, you know, if they're infected, which all of them are, and you do mouth to mouth, well, guess what? You just got it. And we don't need another person getting sick with it, especially one who helps others. Uh, and we certainly don't need another person dying from it. In a not-so-far-away hospital, there was a nurse that already has died from it. So the threat is real, and it's there. And you need to be careful. The mask and the gloves? Well, I went out to the store today. I went to Aldi, and I wore the mask, and I didn't do the Michael Jackson. I wore two gloves. Okay. 90% um, of the people in the store had masks. 80% of those with masks also had gloves. Um, so this is a real deal. They've limited the amount of customers in the store and the social distancing. They have markers on the floors. And you've probably heard about this and seen all this stuff as well in your neck of the woods at this point. Uh, it's scary. And as of right now, we're, we're not over the crest we haven't flattened the curve. We're trying. Um, that's, that's a real deal. Uh, it's getting worse by the day. Um, here in New York, I heard that we had a few less deaths in one day than we did the day previous. But that's sort of like the stock market. There's going to be little ups and downs as you go. You may see a general upward trend or a general downward trend, but there's going to be little bumps in the road as you go. And that's what we saw. So that doesn't really say anything. It may be a trend saying, oh, well, we lost a couple who, you know, we had less people who died. So maybe the next day we'll have even less again. Can happen. It may not. We just don't know. But the threat is real. Uh, like I was saying about the uh, CPR and the mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, 
you can't do that now. And she had a patient the other day who went into a heart arrhythmia. That means the heart is not beating properly. This is where they get out the defibrillator and start doing CPR and stuff like that. Well, like I said, they can't do that now. What they can do is push medications, which sometimes can get them out of it. And they push medications and stood around for three minutes and watched this man die. They stood around for three minutes and watched this man die. That is the most... The only way I can compare this is bright young punk goes into the army. He does his basic training. Wartime is called and he gets called into action. He's sent overseas or wherever the war is. Hypothetical I'm talking here. And he goes into battle and he shoots from a tank and kills five men on the enemy side. There is no amount of training, there is no amount of reading this that can possibly prepare a person for this. It simply can only be experienced. And they watched this man die because they couldn't do anything else. She has all the training. She has the equipment at hand. It's right there. They can call a code overhead and have everybody in the hospital run in there immediately and try to revive this person, and it simply can't happen now. They have to make the choice of who's going to live and who's going to die. And that is something that you cannot, absolutely cannot be prepared for. It only can be experienced. She tells me that when she gets out of work, she clocks out, she walks back to her car, and sits in her car and cries for 20 minutes. Because she knows that she couldn't do the best that she could and had to stand there and watch this. The threat, people, is real. You have to take care of yourself. You have to watch out. It's an invisible threat. We don't know who has it and who doesn't. You can pick it up from anywhere. All the social distancing and the don't touch your face, don't touch your nose, don't touch your eyes, don't pick your nose, don't pick your ears. It's real. Don't do it. It may be hard because, of course, what happens is it's the power of suggestion. You would go and rub your eye or something like that like you would on any other given day. But now, because you say, oh wait, I can't, now if you want to rub your eye, now it gets worse. And you're like, ah, ah, you know, and you don't want to do that. Like often that, that happened to me coming home today in the car from Aldi. My eye, like I just needed to rub it quick. And I said, nope, I just have to grin and bear it until I get home and wash my hands and I got home and I washed my hands and then I could do that now could it still have to I washed my hands for 20 seconds but you never know okay uh, so yeah I might die tomorrow we don't <laughs> nobody knows here okay but uh, you know I did follow all the precautions they tell us to okay it's real and don't think for a minute that it's not Whatever conspiracy theory that you think of, it's not really there. Um, you can talk about 9-11 and everything that happened that and say it was an inside job. And really with that, nobody knows. I, I Personally, I don't believe in that. There are some theories that suggest maybe it was. And the way the building collapsed could only have been an inside job. And it's entirely possible that there were terrorists that planted stuff there. Uh, previously, and it went unnoticed. It's possible. We don't know. Um, 
the bottom line is, from what I see, and again, I'm only going on news stories. I wasn't there. My father was. That cloud you saw come through, he was in that. Okay, and I almost lost him that day. Some 19 years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, whatever you want to believe is fine, but we all have to agree that it certainly happened. The buildings came down. You can go there yourself and see that the buildings are no longer there. So we have to agree that it happened. If you want to disagree on how it happened, that's great. That's up for discussion. Not here on my channel. You can all talk amongst yourselves. Uh, but if you want to believe that, that's fine. If you don't want to believe what the news is telling you about this, that's fine too. Okay? They, they're giving you a load of bullshit. There's no question about it, but there is some truth to what they're saying. So, like I said, take that with a grain of salt. And most importantly, take care of yourselves through this. We're going to get through this. Human beings are pretty resilient. We've had many other diseases and plagues over the years, throughout history, and we've gone through it because we are here today. So, some people lived. Some people died, but some people lived. And generally, we lived, we got through it, and we have vaccines for a lot of diseases. As far as what's going on with Calderona and the vaccine for that, it's up in the air, it's up for debate, it, it's up for whatever you want to talk about. Again, not here, doesn't matter. Uh, we don't necessarily have anything absolutely proven in stone now again you conspiracists are going to say no no we have that we've had it for years this never needed to happen uh, okay whatever you want to say all right but the bottom line is calderona is here and it's real so you have to take care of yourself and be very very careful uh, I'm not, uh, you know, a, a big person for safety. I'm the safety third guy, as you know. But um, as this progressed and has gotten worse and worse, I said, you know what? It is time to put on a mask and put on gloves because there's so many more infected people every single day. And you don't know where it's coming from. It can happen. It may not happen. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Millennials need to stay home. You can't go out with your friends and say, Oh, Taco Bell is having a free Taco Tuesday. Let's go. I'll pick you up. Your friend may have it. You may have it and give it to your friend. You can go yourself and get your free taco. Your friend can follow in his car and get a free taco. And if you want, you can do the cop thing and park the cars, you know, opposite ways and talk to each other through the window. Maintaining your social distance, of course. Or you can just go on your phone and talk to the person in the fucking car next to you. Uh, whatever floats your boat, people. Stay away from other people. You can't be too careful. So you have no choice but to be careful. Like I said, we're fine here. I hope it stays that way. Um, pretty much this is a day-by-day -day thing. Every day that she goes to work, uh, like I said, I'm absolutely scared out of my wits. She comes home. I say, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Go in the shower. Take a shower, get cleaned up, get comfortable, and then we'll talk. Could she be infected and just talking to me? I can get it. Yeah, it can happen. We don't know because the, the, uh, uh, the symptoms don't manifest for a period of time. So anyways, take care of yourselves. Keep your social distancing. Wear gloves. Wear a mask. And this is coming from the safety third guy. If you have or can get an N95 mask, wear it. 
I have N95 masks. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to talk about, they're saying how New York is like out of ventilators and they've, they've uh, uh, had GM start making ventilators. They're only going to break. I mean, it is GM after all. <laughs> I'm not talking about you people with classic Chevrolets and stuff like that. You know, like I said, I have, you know, you know, I have a Buick. Uh, that's GM. Uh, it was. And a lot of cars from that time period look the same because, hey, they're all GM. Uh, <laughs> nowadays, they don't make that great stuff. So <laughs> that's why I'm joking about that. But anyway, yeah, they're out of ventilators. Every single one of these patients needs a ventilator. Every single one needs one. And there are so many patients that they have run out. Now, we're hearing that there are more on order. We're hearing that GM has been summoned to, to make these. Uh, we're, we're hearing this, we're hearing that. Whether or not it happens, whether or not the hospital is out of them, or the state is out of them, or the country is out of them, the wife goes to work, they hand her, it's over there, I can't grab it, they hand her an N95 mask, and they say, don't lose this. You know what? 3M, the company that makes N95 masks, they have chemicals and products like this have what's called an MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet. And the N95 masks say that they should be replaced every four hours. They are not being replaced. She has had the same mask for weeks at a time. The threat is real. We are out of or very low on equipment. I don't think the hospital, quite honestly, would have a closet full of these things locked up. They did say that if your mask tears or gets soiled or somebody throws up on you or something, they'll give you a new one. But as far as just wearing it, she has to wear the same one because they will not give her another. So, you know, after a week, it gets pretty grody and they'll give her another one. But other than that, you can't just take these things out of the supply closet. They're not there for the taking. The stuff is locked up. Everything is rationed out. As it is here, it's hard, as you may already know, I had a video on this previously, going to the grocery store. People are still buying out the toilet paper. I was at Aldi. There was no toilet paper. There were four packages of paper towels. It just so happened I'm down to my last roll of paper towels. I have toilet paper, but I'm running low on paper towels. And I saw the package there, and I grabbed it, because I may not get another chance. The panic buying that everybody is doing is all from the media. All from the news. The news said, hey, we have this Calderona thing going on. Everybody's going to have to stay in their houses, and this, that, and the third. And a lot of people have been laid off in that. So people said, oh shit, this may actually be happening. We need to go to the store. We need to get stuff. We may be locked in our house like it's a snow... What happens when it's a snowstorm? The bread and the milk at the grocery store flies off the shelves. You know what also goes that kind of actually bothers me? The popcorn, the pretzels, the potato chips, shit like that. Why don't you sit down and cook for yourself if you're going to be stuck in the house? Make yourself a nice hearty meal on a cold winter's day. Wouldn't that be better than, oh, let me sit and watch Netflix and eat a bag and a half of potato chips? How do you feel after you ate that? Probably not too good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you want to get bread and get some some meat to go along with it, I need some water, I'm sorry, because <laughs> I've been talking so much. If you want to get 
some bread and some meat to go with it to make some sandwiches to hold you over for a day or two, great. Buy the bread, buy the meat, buy the milk. That's all fine and good. But people are buying out everything. And that was propagated by the media. Pardon me, I need to get something to drink. There we go, that's a lot better. <laughs> Uh, like I said, the media propagated all of this panic buying. Um, supplies are short because everybody is panic buying. Prices have gone up. You see the price of eggs lately? Here in New York, they're getting four bucks a dozen. And the price of meat, there's no sales on it. Much to speak of. So the price of meat has gone up. And the price of staple foods are going to be going up also. Uh, the country is going to be hurting from this for a long, long time. A long time. So, like I said, this is a real thing. You don't have to believe the media because they're full of crap. There's no question on that. Um, my dad told me a story where he went to the grocery store um, this was a couple of weeks ago, uh, kind of when this was really starting to take a stronghold. And there were a few packages of meat there, and there was the meat lady, and she was putting out a few, a few new packages. Uh, are they holding back? I, 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 honestly, I don't know. But a lot of stores, a lot of grocery stores now have institu instituted a no return policy. And that's for good reason, because you could be returning tainted stuff that somebody else might buy or that the workers at the store might get infected by. Uh, so they're not taking anything back. Uh, but originally, they didn't quite have that in place because they didn't know that these repercussions were going to happen. Uh, so the, the media said, okay, this is real, folks, hunker down. And everybody ran to the store, not for the bread and milk, but for the meat and the toilet paper. And the frozen goods. Those are mostly gone also. So everybody bought that. And like I said, my dad bumped into the meat lady and he said, okay, listen, um, what's going on? Um... And she basically told him what happened was everybody rushed out to the stores and bought out all the meat. But stupidly, they couldn't eat as much as they bought because of the panic buying and the meat was going bad. So they brought it back to the store to return it on the, on the sell-by date, saying it's bad already. Because they weren't going to be able to eat it in time. They don't want it to go bad and then eat bad meat. You don't want to do that, okay? Um, but everybody overbought. And when that's returned to the store, they can't resell that. They can't resell that. Even if the sell-by date is three days from today, you can't resell that. Somebody may have done something to it and somebody else could get sick. So that has to be thrown out. So hundreds and hundreds of pounds of meat were brought back to the store and were thrown in the garbage. All because people panic bought because basically the media brainwashed them into it. That's what happened. And now I went to Aldi. They have a limit of two. I couldn't find the family packs. I bought two packages of pork chops. There were three in each pack. And I said, well, three, eh, that's dinner for one night. I might as well, if I'm cooking, do two of them, two, three packs, so that way I could eat for a second day. Why cook every day? You could reheat it the next day. So I could only buy those two, and that's all I got out of the store with because they won't let anybody, because, again, all of the panic buying. And there was a limit on toilet paper as well. I think that was like one per customer, one package per customer. Uh, and then, of course, we hear about the price gouging. This happens anytime. 
um, they were people were running out of there and people needed water so some conniving and enterprising individuals said I got a few cases of water and they stood there at the end of the Brooklyn Bridge and they were selling them for five dollars a bottle what do you get them for a buck buck 25 maybe a buck 50 if you buy it like out of a vending machine five dollars price gouging five dollars for water and people were happy to pay it that was a different story I mean you're breathing that dust in uh, you'll pay twenty dollars for a bottle of water <laughs> because you pretty much know you need that to live okay you wouldn't care if it was fucking toilet water as long as it wasn't yellow or freaking brown you'd probably drink it if you had to or at least rinse your mouth out and spit it out um, people buying the bottled water <laughs> Okay, oh, the tap water is poison. Well, why are they piping it into your house then? Keep buying bottles of water. Have it delivered. Have the Culligan man come by and deliver gallons upon gallons and gallons and gallons of water. Shower in it. Bathe in it. Use it in the toilet. Why is the water coming out of the pipes poisoned? I've been drinking that stuff for 40 years, like I said in the other video, and I haven't died yet. And I just enjoyed some of that just a few minutes ago, and I'm still not dead. Okay? It's fine. What do people in survival mode do if you're stuck in a desert? You know, what do people do? You have to do what you can to survive. Okay, if that means drinking tap water, then drink it. Okay, you're not going to die from that. It doesn't have friggin' typhoid in it. And, oh, there's chemicals and they treat it with this and that. Okay, listen, you on a normal day, Calderona aside, there's so many pollutants and everything else in the air. There's a zillion ways to die. And breathing the air hasn't killed you yet. You're not going to die from drinking the water. If you still believe in bottled water, fine. But buy what you need and leave some for your fellow man. Don't grab everything. Stop panic buying. The stores are staying open. You can go to the grocery store every day of the week. You can go there. You can make six trips into the same grocery store. In the same day, the grocery stores are open. Your favorite restaurants, some of them have closed, yes, the little mom and pop places, but your Taco Bell, your Burger King, your this and that, you can go to the drive through and get stuff, or you can go in and get stuff to go. We went to the diner the other day and got, we each of us got an omelet to go because you can't sit in there because they've closed the restaurants so people don't congregate there because the threat is real so take everything you hear with a grain of salt except for what I told you because again I have inside information and this is the truth there's no reason to believe that it's not hearing from who I heard it from okay the threat is real the panic and everything else is sometimes people's reactions uh, that's what they've been trained to do that's sometimes how the human body and mind work uh, but a lot of it is media driven because what do you do you're stuck at home you put on the news oh we had X amount more deaths today and the curve is still rising and blah 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 and we we're out of this and we're out of that and this is happening and we're shutting this down we're shutting that down you're saying I'm pretty much snowed in for the next month and some people are out of work but don't buy everything they're not preventing you there's no cop standing at everybody's doorstep to arrest them if they leave their house okay you're you're <laughs> you have to be careful when you go out and I go out maybe once a week 
to the grocery store. Fortunately, I keep a lot of stuff in the freezer. So this happened, I'm like, <laughs> I don't really need much. I got frozen vegetables. I got plenty of meat in the freezer. I have some other stuff I can cook. You can still go to a restaurant and get stuff to bring home. Okay, it's not like the stuff is disappearing. And as far as the toilet paper goes, where do you go to take a dump? The bathroom? Most times? What's in most bathrooms? A bathtub or a shower? Yeah, it might be inconvenient. Uh-oh, I gotta take a dump. And then you have to take a shower after because there's no uh, toilet paper. It may be inconvenient, but haven't we all gone to the bathroom to take a dump and you go to clean up and you say, uh, this isn't going to do it. You know, some sometimes you have a bad one. And then you say, hey, the shower is right there. You know, and if you're home already and this and that, uh, yeah, okay. And quite honestly, I now is probably not a good time to be using public restrooms. Of course, if you're going to soil yourself, that's one thing. But if you can hold it, uh, you probably should wait till you get home. Because, you know, things come off in the bathroom and... People could be carrying this and your your ass could get Calderona. <laughs> you don't know, okay? The toilet water can splash back and you got it. You don't know. So you want to be careful. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Take what I said seriously. Take care of yourself, your family, and your loved ones. Seriously, uh, you don't have to believe in God. You don't have to believe that there's only one or that there's many. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to believe in is fine. There may be nobody up there or down there, whoever you preach to. It doesn't make a difference. But generally, we all have a feeling that there's somebody around who's superior. Um... Think about them, talk to them, pray to them, whatever you want to do. But chances are very good that many, very, very many of us are going to get through this. There's 8.6 something million people and we've had 100,000, over, well over 100,000 infected people and... 5,000 deaths or maybe even more than that at this point. Alexa, how many deaths from coronavirus in New York? According to Reuters, as of April 6, 2020, there have been 67,551 cases confirmed of the novel coronavirus in New York, New York. Additionally, there have been 3,128 deaths confirmed due to the novel coronavirus in New York, New York. Okay, that's in the city. That's fine. Uh, whatever it is, uh, we have some numbers. <laughs> Are these numbers real? That was according to Reuters, as she said. Uh, that's media. Is it skewed? Yeah, it might be. But the fact of the matter is, like I said with 9-11, it happened. How you want to slice and dice how it happened, that's up to you. The fact of the matter is, this is real. And people are dying from it like they did in 9-11. The threat is real. Everybody, take care of yourselves. I wish everybody the best. And we'll see you another time. In the meantime, make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And, shameless plug, I got 2,000 plus more videos. You may have missed a couple. Take a look. You might be home. I'm here. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm here to entertain you. <laughs>
most times or show you something interesting. Anyway, thanks very much, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.